Give me a little intro there, Gomer. You're listening to episode number 54 of the Station 71 podcast. My name is Mario, and this week I am joined by my co-hosts... Beth. And Brian. So, we've been very positive on this show for the last 53 episodes. <laughs> um, so that all part. changes today. But yeah, that all changes today. So we decided we're going to do a little bit of uh, discussion on some annoyances that we have at the Disney parks. Um... A little bit of disclaimer there. Yeah, I don't know how this is going to go, because we're all pretty positive about most things that Disney does. Um, Just think of this as a way for us to blow off steam so we can get <laughs> back to making more positive episodes. There you go. Yeah, there we go. That's the best <laughs> way to put it. Um, but all, as always, we're going to dive into the news first. So let's talk about some stuff going around in Walt Disney World this week. Um, first thing that we have on our list is that Captain Jack Sparrow's pirate tutorial is ending at the Magic Kingdom starting this month. Um on September 29th, which my calculations are not correct on that. I was going to say this episode should be out by then, but it won't. Um, so you'll still have a couple weeks to catch uh, Captain Jack's pirate tutorial before this closes, uh, but it will be closing for good on September 29th. Have you guys done anything with Captain Jack's pirate tutorial? Well, I haven't. I think this is basically like the Jedi training thing, but Magic Kingdom, right? Correct. So I think because you have to be a kid to participate, I'm pretty sure. Obviously, I've never done it myself. Um, I just thought the interesting thing about this was that at the end of the note or at the end of the article, it says uh, this is the latest entertainment budget cut to be announced as the fiscal year for Disney comes to a close. And I just wanted to get our little rant session started off by saying. Why do they keep getting rid of entertainment? So, yeah. I mean, I guess along that same line, I know Beth and I were talking about this on Twitter this week. Citizens of Hollywood are getting cut, too. Oh, my gosh. Like, I know. I mean, to be fair, Citizens of Hollywood, I kind of understand because Hollywood Studios is a hot mess, and I'm sure we'll talk about that later. <laughs> um, but Disney seems to like the first thing that they want to cut is entertainment. Mm -hmm. Which is crazy because that's like one of the things that really draws me in is the street atmosphere. <laughs> yeah, it's like it builds the world more. It makes you more immersed. And the fact that they they keep taking away more and more entertainment, it's just like slowly becoming all attractions and that's it. Yeah, I mean, I guess from Disney's perspective, it's not the big ticket item, but I really think it is the thing that really sets Disney apart from most other theme parks is their you know, inclusion of little stuff like that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I agree. So next up, a similar, oh, this, this one makes me angry. Man, all, <laughs> I just want to say all of our news topics are great for this episode because they're things that we can rant about. Oh gosh, yeah. <laughs> so next up on our list is that the Disney Skyliner gondolas will not feature onboard air conditioning. But they will feature onboard audio. <laughs> <laughs> Priorities. <laughs> well, to be fair, Disney has a thing with immersion and audio is part of that, which if you kind of walk around anywhere in Walt Disney World, where do you not hear a background loop? Um, but the fact that they just they didn't want to put air conditioning on this is it makes me so confused. Like these things are going to be so hot. <laughs> Oh my gosh, I know. It's like, I guess this is still in the rumor stage, so it's not like 100% confirmed yet. But if anyone out there has ever just sat in a car with the, like with it off, I'm just imagining that's how these gondolas are going to feel. Yeah. Because there's not going to be any circulation at all because they're enclosed. Oh, I was just going to say, I was reading this article, though. The interesting thing that I didn't know is that the monorails 
I'm sorry, I'm reading this wrong. This it says Disneyland monorails don't have AC. I don't know if the Disney World ones do. I feel Disney like Disney World do. ones definitely do. Yeah. Okay, I was about to say I've never noticed it being hot on there, but I, yeah, it yeah. seems like the years are gonna get hot real quick. Yeah, I'm wondering. I didn't. I didn't ride the monorails when I was at Disneyland because I heard that they didn't have air conditioning, which. I mean, I guess in California, it makes a little more sense because it doesn't get as hot as it does in Florida. But from everything I was reading, planning for that trip, people were like, unless you're using it, the monorail is transportation. Like, don't bother because it's like a hot, like humid, stagnant mess of a ride. It's not it's not like an attraction kind of way that the one at Disney World is. So. I kind of want to make a point really quick because I prematurely got angry at this and now I kind of see why this, this makes sense. Um, part of this article says that the onboard power to the gondola is using, they're used for the audio system is only going to be used for safety spiels and to let guests every, know everything is all right if they have sudden stops. Um, oh, okay. So that kind of makes sense. I'm wondering if this is more of like a power thing, like if they can't actually power AC to each car. Well... I guess thinking about it, it'd be pretty inefficient to do it because you'd have to have a like a unit really in small each one. yeah unit yeah. in each one, and that would take up a lot of space. I feel like I'm wondering I mean, if they're gonna have like vents or like open windows. They or, have to. They right? have yeah. to because you're gonna cook in there if they don't. Yeah, I mean, but how fast are, these things aren't gonna go super fast? How like how much air could possibly be circulating? Um, from my understanding, it's gonna be. Not like super slow, but not super fast. So they're going to move at like a relatively quick speed, but not quick enough that it's going to actually like it, you know, be jarring. I would imagine it's probably can't, it can't go faster than like the monorail. Oh, definitely not. The monorail goes pretty fast. I I wish they would give us like like, an attraction speed to compare it to. I, I feel like it. It can't like go haunted any, mansion speed or I feel like you can't go that slow though, considering how like where they're putting them and like how they're going from resorts to parks. Like granted, Disney doesn't always have like the most efficient transportation for some of these things, but like it's gotta be a decent enough speed that it's gonna get you to the park in under like a half hour. Now, the one thing that I do wanna say that I, I heard this argument mentioned somewhere the biggest draw to these things is that you don't have to sit through stoplights. And I never thought of that until someone else mentioned that to me. So I, I still don't feel like they're going to get you quicker than driving a car though. I feel like they'll get you quicker than the buses. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> maybe. Yeah. If you got to wait for a bus usually then probably. Yeah. It's just, it's not a comparable alternative to, and I know it's not like the reason they're putting it in is so it can go, to Epcot and Hollywood Studios, whereas, you know, the boats and the monorail don't. Well, I guess they do go to Epcot, but um, the monorails do. But I still don't think that this is, like, going to be a super suitable, like, comparison. Well, see, the thing about that that's so weird to me is that you, you added another system that isn't connected to the old one, so you still have the same issues. I could see if this... You know, the Skyliner went to like the TTC and gave you like a connecting place to be able to get to all the resorts. But now you just have like resorts that can go to two of the parks and then you have another set of resorts that can go to the other two parks. Like it's it's just odd to me that they didn't connect these in some way. Yeah. Make it like a circuit or something. Right. Um so our next news article that we had this week was that Illuminations Reflections of Earth, Earth will be ending summer 2019. Farewell. Mm. <laughs> had a good run. Yeah, Almost I, 20 years, right? Yeah. yeah. See, it's funny, and I'm, I'm going to let this one, I'm going to let my rant not sit as heavy on this one because I know it's going to come up later. I know it's coming up later. Um, but I love Illuminations. I don't know if I've ever mentioned this, but Illuminations is probably my favorite current running fireworks show. Now, granted, still haven't seen Happily Ever After, but, you know. Um, I, like, I love Illuminations. I think it's so cool that you can get a different view from any perspective around World Showcase. I really like the idea of it. I love how it's done. But this just, it feels like time. 
Like, there have been other attractions that I've been genuinely upset about closing just because, like, it either felt dated or something felt like, or not, it didn't feel dated or it just felt too soon. But this, like, it, it feels right to say Illuminations is done. Yeah, I mean, I feel like you got to kind of want them to keep pushing the technology and just the new experiences for the nighttime show. And that's kind of where I'm at. Like, I love Illuminations, like I just said, but the the technology Disney's coming out with, the fact that they have such a large canvas to paint this on, everything that they can do in this space, just, it makes me more excited for what could come. As long as it's not Rivers of Light Part 2, I'm <laughs> totally excited. I think Disney learned their lesson the first time. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I'm not heartbroken about this. I just hope it doesn't become an, like a like you said, a Rivers of Light Part Two. But also, being in Epcot, I don't want it to be happily ever after either. I like I said, my only hope is that you get a different perspective every time you walk into a different country and world showcase. I want to sit somewhere different every time I see it and feel like I'm watching a different version of the show that I like. Um, I want them to have some cool some kind of something going on in there. Like the globe, the fire, all of that was so neat to me. And I just, I want something unique about this experience and I want it. I really want to say, I want it to tie into world showcase, but I know that we're past that point. So I'm not even going to say that. I mean, I think it should like if they're going, I think we've talked about this before, but if they are going to insist on having more Disney. I think that was when they announced all these changes to Epcot. That was one of the things they're like, we're going to make it more Disney. They should at least still make it relevant to the countries, you know, like it wouldn't be hard to throw, you know, some sort of tribute to Mulan in China or Belle in France or whatever, you know, as long as it like, I, I don't think it would be hard to work in the countries. And I think it would be kind of irrelevant if they don't at least try yeah, I guess. I, I Maybe it's just me feeling a little bit of spite at the fact that Epcot's becoming IP, mm-hmm. but whatever. So are we ready to talk about this last one? I don't oh, know. <laughs> I, I, I'm going to take the positive approach to this one, because whoever put this article in here a link to the actual full article, and there's some cool stuff in here. Um, there is? Yes, there is. <laughs> so this article specifically opens with the headline 19 new magical and limited time experiences coming to Walt Disney World next year which that's pretty cool things go downhill from there <laughs> <laughs> like why did they they put that as the second thing okay so let's let's start this off so starting January 2018 guests can look forward to the following attractions this is pretty cool in honor of the true originals Mickey and Minnie um will have some more stuff in the the parks I'm just going to generalize this one um New music, some new, I guess, character meet and greets. It looks like we're getting some merchandise. Uh, the Dapper Dans are going to be singing a lot of songs tied towards Mickey and Minnie, which I don't know how they're going to do that. Um, I guess we'll see. Surprise celebrations with limited time magic. And then the big one, move it, shake it, mouse dance it, the street party. Disney. <laughs> were they? The, what are you doing? <laughs> oh, they literally... Like, someone lost a bet and had to go into the meeting with this name, and then they're like, yeah, let's just go with it. (laughs) My favorite, and I said this to you guys, is that, like, two weeks ago, we were like, yeah, move it, shake it's going away. Like, woo, (laughs) exciting new new rumor. And Disney was like, yeah, it's going away, but it's coming back. (laughs) See, either Beth's right and somebody lost a bet with this, or, like, Bob Iger presented this and nobody would tell him no. (laughs) They just went with it. Oh so my gosh. I wanted to bring this up because I know someone out there is going to be like, they haven't, they've done stuff like this before. I love when Disney adds the word mouse in front of things and they're like, this is it. This is it. Like the whole <sighs> mouser size thing, the, that little oh, bit from geez. what I think it was like Mickey Mouse Clubhouse or whatever. Like that was a thing. And it was literally an exercise segment where Mickey Mouse danced with kids. Like how unoriginal can you get by just adding the word mouse in front of it mm-hmm. hang on but they added the word mouse in front of this oh one so God. it's slightly different <laughs> so um, i just uh-huh. want to shout out to whoever actually put this in the show notes 
because uh, for everyone that can't see the show notes, it says, move it, shake it, mouse cadence it, kill it, end it, please remove it. <laughs> was that Brian? Yeah, that was me. That, awesome. I knew it. Um, but some of the other stuff, because I think that this is pretty cool. Um, we're going to be seeing some Incredibles love, actually some Pixar love overall to Hollywood Studios. Um Pixar Place is going to transform into a Metroville city block. I'm assuming that this is probably temporary. Um, at the end of the block, a party held in honor of Miss Incredible, Mr. Incredible, and Frozone will be celebrating their superhero deeds. You'll also get to eat meat. Wow, I hope you don't get to eat Edna Mode. <laughs> you said eat meat, so. <laughs> at the let's, end uh, of the- let's not do that. <laughs> <laughs> uh, you'll also get to meet Edna Mode, um, which that was a super cool meet and greet that they did in Magic Kingdom for a while. And in Pixar Place, this is one I'm confused about, but also kind of intrigued about. In Pixar Place, you'll get to look for clues for whereabouts on the mischievous and multi-powered Jack-Jack. Um, I'm assuming that's like the scavenger hunt type of things that they do at Epcot, maybe? Yeah, I was kind of thinking that. I was really hoping that it's not that, but I, I think that that's probably the best way to like temporarily place that in there. Yeah. Um, but then elsewhere at Disney Hollywood Studios, a door to the Monster World will open in side of Walt Disney World Presents, and you'll get to meet Mike and Sully. Didn't they meet somewhere? No, they met in... Where did they meet before? No, I think they did used to meet in Hollywood Studios if they don't currently. I yeah, think it was they did. over where, uh, the where Launch Bay Backlot is, right? tour used to be. Yeah. Uh, huh. Huh. I don't know. I am not super familiar with Hollywood Studios in its current state. Um, so more stuff for the parks. This this article is like just chock full of stuff for next year. Um, to celebrate the 25th anniversary of Walt Disney Pictures' The Lion King, uh, Timon and Pumbaa will... Or, sorry, Timon and Rafiki will be in the Hakuna Matata dance party on Discovery Island. Um, which no one really asked for any more dance parties. <laughs> <laughs> Getting that ran out of the way early. <laughs> uh, I, okay, I gotta ask. Have either of you ever participated in a dance party? I've walked by one and just went, please let this be where all the crowds are in Tomorrowland. <laughs> Yeah, I, just, I get real sad every time I walk by the Incredibles dance party. Oh my gosh, it's so, yeah, because it's always empty, right? It is, and like, you know, the DJ still pouring his heart into it, and all the characters are out there dancing, and it's like four families like trying to get their kids to go out there and do it, and even the kids don't want to do it because the costumes are kind of terrifying, so... Mm-hmm. Plus, there's yeah. that video of Miss Incredible's face falling off. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> I think the only dance party I have ever seen be successful is those awesome African ladies at Animal Kingdom. To and be fair, though. Adding Timon and Rafiki does not seem like that's going to improve that dance party. Yeah. Because those be ladies fair, are though. awesome. Move it, shake it has to be pretty successful if they're keeping it around in a new form. <laughs> I guess, uh. but I mean, I think I think a lot of people are already in the hub when Move It Shake It starts, and they think it's a parade, so more people <laughs> gather, and then they feel obligated to participate because they're already there. So that is cute. Thank fair. you. I'm Nobody not, is running to the hub to watch this. Right. I'm not giving Move It Shake It any credit. <laughs> <laughs> um. So. Also in Animal Kingdom, you're going to be getting some new three-dimensional photo opportunities, which we'll see how that goes. I like photo ops, so this is mm-hmm. kind of cool. Um, they, uh, they have one in at the uh, entrance right now that's pretty cool. It's like a frame that's carved that to kind of look like the uh, like the animals carved into the Tree of Life, but it's like a square or rectangle picture frame you can stand in. Cool. So Sweet. if it's uh if it's more stuff like that, I'll be a fan. Nice. So let's breeze through these Epcot ones real quick because this is all stuff that we knew was coming. Um, Festival of the Arts is coming back, which means Disney on Broadway concert series is coming back. Uh, it looks like they're going to be having some longer stuff for Flower and Garden, which we also knew was coming back for the the concert rock series. It looks like it's going to be seven days a week instead of was it just the weekends? 
I feel like that ran all the time. Yeah, I don't know. Because this says that they're expanding it to seven days a week, which means a total of 270 concerts over the course of a 90-day event. So I guess they're doing more than one or two shows. Okay, but that's kind of stretching it, right? Because don't they do like three shows a day whenever they perform? So that's kind of been the case, hasn't it? Yeah, I guess so. Um, so I, this article threw me off too because they added more Hollywood studio stuff under Epcot. Like, <laughs> <laughs> ka-chow, Lightning McQueen's oh, racing academy. <laughs> as soon as I saw that, I was like, oh. <laughs> I am glad that it w- that it is a little bit confusing this article because when I saw Lightning McQueen under Epcot, I was like, "Excuse me." <laughs> oh, I think we talked about this before, but this Racing Academy thing has to be like a pop up show because it's just coming so soon. Uh, it's almost like a show that they already had called Lights, Motors, Action. Why didn't they just keep that instead? <laughs> Who knows? Oh, goodness. That um, show was actually cool, though. I thought, anyway. Whatever. I'm not a Cars fan, so I'm always bitter when they get more attention. <laughs> um. Yeah, I hate Cars, so I really can't <laughs> say anything. Um, tell it how it is, Mario. <laughs> hate is such a strong word. <laughs> Uh, Cars is my least favorite franchise of anything that Disney owns, and that's saying a lot. Um, yeah. So, also along with that, you'll get to meet Cruz Ramirez outside of the Racing Academy, and that's pretty much it for this article. So, lots of exciting stuff, and also, please get rid of Move It, Shake It. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so... Let's dive into some of the other positive stuff from this week. I have one thing for some housekeeping listener feedback stuff. I don't think we got any emails this week, did we? I don't think so. So the only piece of, uh, I guess, listener feedback that I really kind of wanted to to share was I've been trying to put our show like everywhere to try to grow the audience. I'll throw it out there. I'll admit it. Um, And I posted to a subreddit and a comment that came up on there was from user Disney princess 08 on Reddit. <laughs> feels so weird to not tie an actual name to that. <laughs> um, <laughs> said that this could be one of their favorite episodes and they really want us to do more attraction based stuff. I think that was the general consensus. A lot of people, uh, you know, really liked the haunted mansion episodes. So I'm excited to maybe do more of those. Yeah, for sure. Cool. Um, Now let's get down to the nitty gritty. Oh, goodness. (laughs) So let's start this off by saying that obviously we love Disney, um, that this whole show is not going to change anything that we feel about Disney. We just have some things we want to get off of our chest and some stuff that we want to be mad about. So (laughs) who wants to go first? Oh, well, do we want to go by? Do we want to go by categories, or do we want to like just kind of roll these off? Yeah, maybe we'll just go down the list in general, not necessarily confine them to categories. Yeah. So, well, I guess I'll start off, because I put the very first one. And one thing that I really dislike about the Disney community are what we all call pixie dusters, and... These are people who don't think Disney can do anything wrong. They think every every Disney movie is amazing. They think there is no criticism to be had about the company, about the films, about the parks, anything at all. And that drives me absolutely nuts because I don't think you can be truly a good fan if you aren't able to be at least some level of unbiased. I, I agree with that because I feel like Obviously, you know, we're all big Disney fans, but that kind of makes me be more critical, I think, of stuff when it comes out to whether or not it's kind of holding up the Disney standard. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I agree with that. And it's it's funny to, to kind of think about that because you can also hate the opposite, too. You can hate people that are too critical or not critical enough. There's like a fine line where you kind of like you can really enjoy it. Or you can, you know, and you can appreciate the things that it does right, but also be like, why did you do that? 
I don't mm-hmm. think we're pixie dusters or oh, even I'm remotely close. Not. Yeah. We give some good criticisms. <laughs> <laughs> so, I guess my next one. Um, I had social media influencers and this whole trend of being popular on the internet. I know this doesn't really kind of just stay with Disney, but Disney's kind of started to acknowledge it recently, and they've started giving perks to some of these people, which kind of to a counterpoint, I can see why, because it's essentially just extra advertising for them, because these people are definitely in the same category as before, where they, you know, pixie dust every time. Um, But it's just so weird to me that Disney is like, okay, these people are popular on the internet, let's give them stuff, let's give them tickets to events, let's give them, you know, whatever, just to to promote things. Yeah, I don't know if, like, every Disney Instagram person I see is one of the ones that's necessarily an influencer that's actually getting benefited, or, like, benefiting from Disney, but... Just in general, the people who their entire Instagram, all it is is really, like, posed, like, particular photos of the parks, at the parks, related to Disney, just, that drives me nuts. Like, I feel like it gets to a level where it's almost, like, it's borderline creepy stalkerish. But... Yeah. Well... Man, I don't, I don't want to throw this out there because I know this is going to get me in a lot of trouble. <laughs> uh, that's <laughs> what this episode is about, Mario. I'm going to say this. We're getting and in I, trouble. I'm going to say this, <laughs> and I'm going to regret saying this later, but I also... Okay, so this is going to be the weirdest thing that I'm ever going to work. So I appreciate the DCP for what it is. I appreciate what it does for people. I appreciate the fact that you get the opportunity to work in some place that's really awesome and you get like a once in a lifetime chance thing but i hate how so social media has turned college program kids into celebrities Mm -hmm. and it's like oh my gosh that is one of the biggest things that like just grinds me so hard yeah i (sighs) feel like i feel like dcp kids a lot of times they have this like air of superiority and i hate that yeah that's exactly it like I, like I said, I love the program. I think it's great. I think it's absolutely incredible what it does for some people. Like, you know, I applied to it a couple times when I was in college, but not that I'm bitter that I didn't get in. I just think that the whole environment of people that constantly post on social media about like the awesome things that they're doing during their CP, which is fine, like whatever, enjoy it while you can. But then the people that are like, oh my God, I need to meet this person. Like they're like a meet and greet for a character. Like that's, that's the thing that gets me. <laughs> I guess that kind of goes with social media influencers as a whole. Yeah. The thing that annoys me the most about these people are the ones that have to post every day, but they don't always have something to post every day. So we get Mm -hmm. like throwback picture and it's like them holding a dole whip out in their hand with like a, you know, at an angle with a snapshot (laughs) filter on it. It's like... Okay, uh, you know, show me you doing something in the park every day. That's fine. I like following people like that. Show me you doing cool experiences that maybe I'm not getting to do. That's cool. I like seeing that. That kind of stuff just annoys me. It's like, okay, you obviously didn't have something today. You didn't have to post today. It's okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You got to keep their uh, followers up. Yeah, they're going to fall into, you know, irrelevance because they didn't (laughs) post something for one day. Oh. oh goodness so <laughs> my annoyance about the Disney community is the fans that just come out of the woodwork whenever something's getting changed or closed and the whole reason that the stuff is getting changed or closed is because these same people were not taking part in these activities to begin with mm-hmm and yep. yeah, Beth, I see you. You commented about Maelstrom here. I think that is the overwhelming like one to point to in this situation. No I, one cared oh, about Maelstrom until I it was cared. closing. I cared. Look, I absolutely it, cared. I was the one it, percent. <laughs> it was. It was a nice, fun little attraction, but nobody, nobody said, 
Oh man, look, we got to be at Maelstrom at Rogue Swap <laughs> to make sure we get to do it. Okay, nobody was, you know, worried about getting on that ride. Nobody's trip was going to be ruined if they didn't get on Maelstrom. Mm-hmm. Okay, that's so, absolutely true, though. Like I, I loved Maelstrom, but it was more of a like nostalgia thing. Like one hundred percent. I mean, that's yeah. exactly it. Like I can say things are dated and be like, okay, I understand why that closed. Yeah, I was a little upset when Maelstrom closed. I probably, if I were to go back on my Twitter history, I would see some very upset tweets about it. But I'm not going to be like angry and be like, I'm not going to ride Frozen Ever After because it's Maelstrom. But like, I, I just that's that's annoying. I agree a hundred percent. And you we'll know, see. I I love Maelstrom too, but. Like you said, 100% of my love was because of nostalgia because Maelstrom is one of the few things that I have like a really vivid memory of riding at Disney as a child. So I was sad when it closed for that reason and that reason alone. The people that I'm talking about are ones that like, they just like, they didn't care about it at all. It wasn't nostalgic for them. They just didn't want something at Disney to change or close. Right. Yeah. Um, I'm going to bounce off of that with an off the cuff one and I'm going to say this and I hope Kirsten's not listening, <laughs> but I hate the, what would Walt want people oh, that my God, yes. drives me crazy. I like, listen, you know, whatever, this is Walt's company. It is Walt's vision, you know, but times have changed so much from then. And there's so many things that, you know, not that the park can't function without, but the park would, one, have a larger influx of audience and potentially more revenue for. Specifically, the whole alcohol and Magic Kingdom thing. I think that's ridiculous, but... Mm-hmm. You know whatever. I think that's ridiculous. <laughs> I wasn't even going to say that, but... <laughs> yeah, no. no, I totally agree. It's, you know, if if you could say anything for Walt, it's that one quote where he said that he never wants the parks to be finished. Like he, he wants them to constantly be evolving and changing for the better. And when, when it does that, how can you be mad unless it's a terrible, terrible change, but you get what I'm saying? Yeah. And that's kind of what I, I feel about it. Like, I don't, I don't know. I don't think that, anyone can really truly know what Walt would have wanted because none of us were around for that. Like Mm -hmm. that's where it gets me is it's, it's always people that would have no connection and they're like, well, that's not what Walt would have wanted. And it's like, how do you know? (laughs) (laughs) WWWD. What would Walt do? (laughs) So I guess the next section we have on here are, uh, Disney trends that we hate. So, Mine was the first on here, and I'm going to say this. We've talked about this a lot, so we don't really even need to keep this like as big as some of our other rants are going to be, but taking away things that used to be perks and making them premiums. And mm-hmm. The one thing that comes to mind, and I know you guys disagree with me on this, but I still think that this is like them edging it out. I think that extra, like the early morning hour things are their way to kind of maybe decrease on extra magic hours. I don't know. I, I still don't agree with that just because I feel like the early morning magic and the like magic after hours or whatever the nighttime one is called has been going on for a while. And it hasn't changed extra magic hours so far, which I know that's not concrete evidence that extra magic hours are safe. But, <laughs> you know, extra magic hours are like a really big benefit as to why people should quote unquote should stay on property it's like that's one of the things that they flaunt like if you stay on property then you get to go into the parks early or late and like the like general public gets kicked out and i feel like that's a big deal to a lot of people and i think it'd be really dumb for like a dumb business move if they took that away well okay so kind of counterpoint to that and i i mean this is this is going years back um i remember when we were going like my mom's whole family And there would be two sets of extra magic hours. You'd have one in the morning and one at night, and it was always at a different park. So, like, Epcot would have early morning hours. Magic Kingdom would have late night magic hours. Now you really only see that one park. So I don't know if that's, like, 
that's mm. because of that. I don't know if that's like a cost decision, but just an observation I've made over the years. I really hope that that's not like I really hope Disney proves me wrong on that. But you know, there's plenty of other things that they've done. But that's always my biggest grievance. Is I'm like these early morning hours are going to take my extra magic hours away. <laughs> I guess the other one would be parking. <laughs> oh boy. Yeah, y'all know my, my feelings on parking after that other weekend. <laughs> oh my gosh. Oh. And like and the whole one of the arguments for charging for parking at the resorts now was oh well we're you know, other resorts in the Orlando area charge to park but so we're just like doing it to compete. And I'm like, I have never stayed off property and had to pay for parking. Well, I feel I feel like that's not really a thing in Orlando. That's a thing in like really gigantic like condensed cities like New York or like Los Angeles. Well, I don't know. I, I can't remember if we talked about this on the show or not, but I remember talking to you guys about how there seems to be in the last couple of years um Disney really not like paying much attention to the things that made people stay on property. They're really kind of focusing more on this is the Disney bubble and that's where you want to be if you're staying here. Like, even the parking thing specifically, it's like, that was a premium for staying on property. You know, extra magic hours are a premium for staying on property. And these resorts that they're building inside of Disney property that aren't Disney owned are getting things like that. I mean, Mm -hmm. granted, that's not like something to be super mad about. Like, that's not it's not even really like a thing that I'm angry about, but it just, it seems like the care for people that stay on property versus the people that don't stay on Disney property is a little bit less than what it used to be. I feel like Disney Mm -hmm. really used to have to sell their packages and now they're just like, it's Disney people will stay here. Mm -hmm. See, so I'm just going to run through my little story real quick, just to kind of, explain why i think this is a bad idea for (laughs) i mean not only for guest experience but like disney is a company i was going to go to kimono's the sushi bar that's at the swan and dolphin hotel i think it's at this dolphin i can't remember but um me and my wife went up and we went to the parks and then we went to go out to eat um so we drive up to the hotel and they've started instituting a it was like a $20 $20 parking and that was for anything over a half hour and I said well that's ridiculous it was for if you don't have a reservation and you can't make reservations at kimono so obviously we didn't have them well we saw that and I said wow that's pretty high I don't want to pay an extra 20 bucks so I thought hey let's just drive over to the boardwalk it's right next door because you know we had done that before and we'll just walk over it's not that far of a walk well we drive over to the boardwalk and now the boardwalk has started charging I mean I think it was 30 five dollars for parking if you don't have a reservation to a a, you know if you're not staying at the boardwalk or if you don't have a reservation to one of the restaurants there so we were like that's ridiculous so we drove to disney springs and ate somewhere there (laughs) and i just think like you know disney trying to charge this extra money i feel like it's gonna you know have the opposite effect on a lot of people, you know, it obviously did for me. Instead of me going in there and spending far more than twenty dollars on my dinner there, I spent nothing there because they were trying to charge an extra for parking. Mm-hmm. And I, you know, I hope a lot of people react the same way that I did and will kind of vote with their dollar. And hopefully, Disney will see that that's losing them money in the long run because I mean that was just ridiculous to me. Yeah. So- I also think that kind of off of that point, people won't do that because Disney's demographic isn't you. And that's true. I say that very specifically to say that Disney World targets the once in a lifetime vacationer. And, you know, obviously Disneyland, it would be something different because that's a local audience. Everyone that goes there, you know, mostly is locals. But the general demographic for Walt Disney World is not that. <laughs> mm-hmm. And I, I completely agree with that. It does make me worried to think that if there if people do start reacting at least in some way like i did that disney's going to start saying you know what we need to do we need to start charging for parking at disney springs i wonder when like a lot of these things i wonder when that breaking point is like what tips the scale to disney and says okay this is now is the time to capitalize on this or now is the time to take this away or now is the time to make this a premium 
Yeah, uh, I'm kind of surprised that they don't charge for parking at Springs already. Yeah, I feel like that would come before resorts, but I guess not really. Mm-mm. Well, then again, that's not a ticketed, well, not, neither is the resorts, so I don't know where I'm going with that. Yeah. So I guess we can move on to the general park things that suck. <sighs> <laughs> <laughs> My first one, again, I have said this a couple times. I've said that this is my favorite restroom on property, but Tangled deserved so much more than a bathroom. Mm -hmm. And I'm so disappointed that that's all that we got out of that construction area. Yeah, I feel like they are so, like, before Frozen happened, I feel like Disney has been so hesitant to put permanent things in the parks that aren't related to the classic Disney princesses, but that they're like slowly putting like more and more in there. But it, I mean, if you think about it, is there a, any other than frozen ever after, is there an attraction for a non classic Disney princess? Technically. No. And technically on an Elsa um. arc official Disney princesses yet, but you know what I mean? Voyage of the Little Mermaid. Yeah, but well, yeah, I think at a, this point, that's Ariel definitely can be considered a classic. A classic. Okay. Because that's 89, say, right? Well, okay, yeah. also, to be fair, I mean, I know you're going to be biased about this, but um, I think anything post Renaissance doesn't really count as classic, and the only princesses we've had are Tiana, Rapunzel, and I guess Anna and Elsa. And Merida. So, Oh, so well, true. Merida has a meet and greet. Well, I don't think meet and greets really count as permanent yeah. things because they're not. But well, her area is pretty permanent. I well, will yeah, say her that. area is is pretty pretty set in stone, pun intended. But <laughs> um, <laughs> side note, I really hate where they put that. I like the area. I just I agree. I hate the location. The queue puts it in such a weird spot. Mm-hmm. Isn't it like beside Cosmic Rays? Yeah, it's like right behind the castle in between Fantasyland and Tomorrowland. It's, so yeah, yeah you're kind of looking cusp. at Cosmic Rays. Yeah, it kind of doesn't make sense to be yeah. like staring at Cosmic Rays in the queue. But whatever. Um, yeah, so I guess that, like bouncing off of your comment, Mario, that's a that's a peeve of mine is that they're, they're so hesitant to incorporate newer movies and keep i don't know harping on the same classics which don't get me wrong i love the classics i'm a Rena- i'm a renaissance baby but it's like it's always nice to have something fresh i think that or actually not i think i thought that we were going to get something princess and the frog when they started to refurb the uh riverboat uh, me too i was hoping and I, then they started to talk about how it was just general maintenance. I was like, man, that sucks. That was such a wasted yeah. opportunity. Right? They could have, they, like, they could do so much more with the riverboat. But the only, like, the the thing I will give them credit for is, and I absolutely loved Dream Along with Mickey. So I was really sad when that show closed. But they basically did it like a newer version with newer princesses in you know mickey's royal friendship fair so i will give disney credit for that at least i do have to say i'm I'm gonna bounce off of you on that my one gripe with mickey's royal friendship fair was that there was so much frozen in it Uh, and i'm just i'm over let it go like i'm so over let it go and i think that maybe was why but i also have to give disney a lot of credit that they didn't put let it go in happily ever after (laughs) thank you (laughs) thank you yeah, that's a good point. I do think that obviously they paid the most attention to Frozen in that show, but I was honestly just happy to see the Princess and the Frog get some attention and Tangled, so. Yeah. So this next one we've kind of ranted on a little bit already. Um, Tomorrowland Speedway, the worst thing in the Magic <laughs> Kingdom. Um, and honestly, I thought about this a lot this week. Really, they don't need to get rid of it entirely. Just do something with the cars. Like, don't make them run off that obnoxious fume gas that they run on now. Make them electric. Do something with them. Like, just make it kind of more futuristic to tie into Tomorrowland, even though that doesn't have a theme anymore. Mm-hmm. Just Yesterday so easy, Land. Disney. Yeah. It's just so easy, and they can't capitalize on it. 
Yeah. I mean, I wouldn't be sad if they completely got rid of it. Honestly, I would be 100% okay if they got rid of it and turned that area into a seating with benches. Like, (laughs) that's how much I hate this attraction. Like, I don't understand the appeal of this attraction. It's not even like a go-kart. You don't get to, you're on a track. You don't get to control it. Like, the only thing I could see is like a little kid gets to pretend that they're driving, which you can't do you know, a little kid can't drive a go-kart if they're under a certain age, but it's just like half of the queue, you're standing in the sun. The entire ride, you're sitting in the sun. There's there's like no redeeming qualities about this attraction. And you got some kid slamming into you from mm-hmm. behind because they're getting to the drive mm-hmm. for the first time. God. I, I can't stand it. I think at this point, like, I'm just so used to the idea that it's not going to close anytime soon but yeah. I don't know um yes yeah, so that's my grape with it we can move on to the next one we've talked about that a lot alright my probably biggest in park gripe is the my Disney experience app I it's not awful but for Disney to be pushing it is like the end all be all like one stop thing to take care of all your planning or in part decision making like it's it's not easy to use and that's coming from someone that uses it almost weekly if not more often mm-hmm. like sure. if 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 i open the the app just as we follow through this like the first thing that comes up is like a Google image map of the Magic Kingdom that's zoomed in way too far that's taking up the top third of my screen <laughs> and not giving me anything. Then it gets to the actual information, my fast passes. Then, oh boy, we've got a giant ad for the Disney Play app, <laughs> which is just Can awful. we just go off on that tangent now? Like, Yeah. Okay, so we'll all go back to that. my Disney experience. Yeah, so my mine after that, because you just brought it up, was the Play Disney app. And we've talked about this a couple times. It's so bad in its current state. And I know I think Brian said this last week. I think Disney's given up on it. Like I really think they have. <laughs> if you have this installed on your phone still, there's something potentially wrong. I want to next time I'm down there install it and see like if there's anything changed, because that's like six months from now. But still, I just feel like, one, this was a good idea to begin with. Like, you know, people are already paying attention to their phones in the parks. Like, give them something Disney-related to look at. This was such a cool idea to to have it interact with your location. But, like, it's such a missed opportunity. And Disney just, like, gave up on it so early. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It's funny that uh, this is what we're talking about. Because, A, I went to, when Mario started talking about the Play app, I went to my phone to, like, get on it to look at it while we were talking about it and i was like oh wait never mind i deleted it and everyone has and then when uh brian started talking about my disney experience i also tried to pull that up and like look at it while we're talking about it and i i literally clicked the icon when you started talking about it and it still hasn't loaded (laughs) can i tell you i like this has been the most stressful week for me because I make ADRs tomorrow and oh my gosh. the app has not worked all week. Okay, I opened it and it just loaded. Thanks for proving me wrong. <laughs> but, <laughs> I heard mine you just about loaded. It. Well, like, I, my one friend is going down like in a week and they're not staying on property. So she was like trying to make her ADRs a couple days ago and she couldn't do anything. She hasn't been able to connect with anyone on my Disney experience, hasn't been able to link her photo pass, her tickets her dining reservations she couldn't make them like she's in such hot water to go down and she's so pissed off about it and i was thinking about it i'm like i have to make adrs tomorrow like i do it online i well the worst part is is i'm gonna be at work like i i have to Uh, sneak off to go make these adrs and i'm gonna have to do it like on the mobile web browser from my phone (laughs) dang yeah i don't do i don't make any sort of reservation on the app i do it all on the website it just it's garbage. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So that's that could bring us back to like the more specific gripes that I have with this. Like, 
I do maybe four things with the app and it's not easy to do the four things that I want to do with it. Like I want to be able to make fast passes, check wait times, look at my photo pass pictures and occasionally make dining reservations on the app. And it's a pain to get to those. Like those things are what I feel like most people would want to do with the apps and they're not easy to get to. Like if I want to check wait times, I click on the map first of all, which why is that where I go to? And it shows me wait times on a map, which I hate looking at. I always want to see a list. So if I hit show list, it shows me a list of everything from every park. Then I have to go in there and sort by whatever park I'm at. Like That annoys me so much. It, I feel like the best thing that they could do is have it open up and you like select what park your app and then it give you options based on that because i don't know i just feel like it, it there's it has the functionality it needs to but the user interface to get to those things is not very straightforward i also think kind of off of that it's it's simple fixes and that's the, the biggest problem is like it's it's small things that could tweak it to make the user experience that much better but because it works in its current functionality, Disney's not in any rush to fix it. Well, it's like they updated it. It seems like every two or three weeks and the stuff still isn't easy to get to. It's just in another location. So now <laughs> I got to figure out where it is again. Oh, goodness. So side tangent, because I have to go on this too. Um, I, I love the fact that I can make ADR so early, but I also hate it because I feel like in six months from now, I'm not going to know what I want to eat. Mm-hmm. So like... The whole 180 days out thing is kind of annoying, but that's not something I can really dive much more into. Yeah, I very rarely make ADRs, so it doesn't super affect me how far off the like booking is. But I don't know. It just I I just I feel like a lot of it is too far in advance, like. 60 yeah. days for fast passes is fine. It's two months. You know, you should be planning your trip at the two month mark. But 180 days, like, that's just, I don't know. I think that's ridiculous. I also, too, I want to say that this might be a small group, but I also think that this should be something that is also more closely tied to staying on property. I mean, I know there's people like Brian that don't, like, they can go down on the weekend and, you know, eat wherever they want to, or if they want to plan something in advance, 180 days is great. But I feel like there should be a smaller, tighter window for people that are off property. Like, I don't know. To me, it just feels weird that this is the thing that, like, fast passes, you get an extra couple days on, but this is something that everybody has the same advantage on, unless, like, you're booking for your whole trip. Yeah. I know that like doesn't apply to either of you, <laughs> so you're both probably like shut up. <laughs> oh no, is, I get it. Is it kind of weird to either of y'all though that like, you get dining reservations open up before fast pass selections? Yeah, maybe scary. I'm not that big on dining at Disney, but it seems like I if I was planning a trip and when I was planning trips, I was way more concerned about getting my fast passes mm-hmm. than getting my dining options. I, do I think have pretty to much say, everybody does. I do have to say though, because I was in the same boat for like the longest time. Now I think I've hit a point where I've done all of the attractions I wanted to in Disney. Like granted there's still like the newer stuff that I know that I'm not exactly going to get a fast pass for right away, or I'm going to have a smaller chance at getting a fast pass for. So I'm not overly concerned, but uh, there's more places I haven't eaten in comparison to it, to rides I haven't been on. So that I'm kind of more like I'm concerned about stuff with, but at the same time, I'm like, you know, I, I still want to ride this attraction when I get there. I still want to do this when I get there. So I'm kind of at a point where I'm equally concerned with everything. <laughs> That's a good point. I guess. Yeah. If you if you do go multiple times, you're probably going to ride a lot of the same rides over and over again, but not dine at the same places. So I guess that does make sense. And that's, the funny thing is, is I, and I have to go over my list with you guys after we get done. Well, I'm not going to jinx it. I'll talk to you guys about this tomorrow after I make my ADRs if I get everything. <laughs> um, but I'm really excited about all the places that we want to dine this trip. Like just going through the menus and everything and like looking at the stuff that's there. I know this is kind of contradictory to what I just said, but I'm really excited to book these and I'm really hoping that I can get through with some of them because I would really enjoy to eat here. 
fast passes and all that hasn't come up yet. So I'm not like overly concerned, but a lot of these places are places we haven't been before. So I think the new experience and that being something different, keeping it fresh is kind of really exciting to me. So do we want to move on to the next one or oh, do we yes. have more rants about the <laughs> Um, I news? just was going to throw out a little rant. This isn't necessarily directly related to the app, um, but it's, it is related to fast passes, which, you know, we we're talking about reservations and stuff. Uh, the fact that they just, tra- they, uh, just changed it to where you cannot transfer fast passes and everything is glitching up. And it sucks because literally this is my story. When I was trying to make fast passes for my most recent trip, they had literally just changed this rule. So instead of just being able to change one of my friends that wasn't going to be at the parks with us to a friend that unexpectedly was going to be at the parks with us, I had to remove that friend from our party and then try to put the new friend back in in two separate transactions. And in doing so, it completely erased everyone from the reservation except for me and luckily i went to guest services and it was for flight of passage so yeah it was a big deal i went to guest services and they all they sorted it all out but it was just a really annoying inconvenience to you took away this capability and then you have a bunch of glitches to go along with it so that's my soapbox i'm stepping down (laughs) <laughs> that's okay i see i get why they took it away because people abuse the system mm-hmm. but i also kind of side note like side tangent off of your side tangent <laughs> i feel like disney's cracked down on ways to game the system recently has anybody else felt like that yeah like, oh yeah definitely i i mean i've thought about it a lot lately with you know i, I just opened a subscription to touring plans and i was looking through that and i'm like a lot of this stuff is out on the internet like it's all common knowledge now and a lot of the stuff that you would need to go buy guidebooks for or listen to you know podcasts which wow i just nailed the medium we're on um (laughs) like or even like you know go out and read the forums and stuff like that all those things that like disney experts knew disney's kind of like tied down on that and made it super tight and it's all like according to their rules maybe we just haven't figured out how to game their system yet but it's just so weird that disney was like oh yeah this was the thing that really didn't hurt us too bad but let's tighten down on that yeah i mean i'm not hugely opposed to them making things to where people can't abuse the system as much but i do think it's unnecessary in some cases like i don't i don't think this was a huge deal because like realistically the thing the reason that they changed it was because people would have friends and family on their like contacts on my Disney experience that had annual passes or tickets that weren't used yet or whatever. So they would make the fast passes for the group with the other people, like the people that have the annual passes, not intending on going on the trip and then just being able to switch it over to the person that is going on the trip after they bought their tickets, if that makes sense. Yeah. But how many people were using this? Like, how many fast passes could you possibly have been booking this way to transfer? You know, it's like, do you have just a list full of annual pass holders that you just use, were using their pass to your advantage? I just so, don't, I don't think it was, I don't think it was as big of a deal as Disney made it out to be. I think want to say okay this may not be related at all and this may just be me like throwing my tinfoil hat on um but i think it probably has something to do with the like dining reservation sniping i don't know if you guys remember when that was a big thing um where people would pick up like dining reservations on like bot accounts and then sell them online oh my god do you not remember that? No. It happened when Be Our Guest like first opened. I never um, heard about this. Oh yeah. People would like sell transferred dining reservations online. And I think as a result, Disney kind of had to crack down on all of those. I know it wasn't probably even a thing with fast passing, but I remember this with dining reservations because when Be Our Guest first opened, that was why it was so impossible. It was because people were either booking them like they do now through their trip, um, where you have that window, but at the same time people were also like picking up reservations that didn't have any kind of stay in the park or anything like that. 
and selling them online. There wow. used to be, I know Touring Plans has the service now where you get text alerts for things like that, which, by the way, that's pretty cool. I got a text at 6 this morning because I accidentally forgot to change that we moved our reservation back a day, that a dining reservation I wanted was available. <laughs> Um, oh, bummer. but yeah, I mean, I'll probably get it again tomorrow morning, but it was really cool that they do stuff like that. But apparently there were sites like that back when this was a thing and they would do that, but they were the ones that were also grabbing their, the reservations. So they were kind of like, yeah, if you come and book through our service, you pay like $10 a month and you get this and they would actually like sell you that reservation. I mean, I like. I guess I can see it from that standpoint, but I think the difference being that you don't have to, unless you're booking like Cinderella's Royal Table or like, I guess, signature dining, you don't have to put a deposit down or anything. You just have to have an account and make the reservation. Right. But for fast passes, you have to have an active like ticket linked to your account. So I just feel like that's such an elaborate scam if that's what people were doing. Like, buying a bunch of tickets and making fake fast passes and then having people pay them to transfer them over because then you have they have to add each other on my disney experience and become friends and stuff and I well i don't think it was exactly a result of that like i don't think that people were going through and doing that scam but i think it was like disney saw oh they did that with dining well, let's make sure that they can't do that with fast passes too I think they're giving the Disney community more credit than they need. <laughs> I, th- I think so. I generally think yeah. that they do that a lot. Yeah. They're not one big, giant, organized crime family. <laughs> right. <laughs> Secretly, we're all the gangsters seen from the great movie ride. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Which I guess that kind of goes right into your next one, Ben. Oh my gosh, yes. <laughs> so, just in general, the current state of Hollywood Studios... I hadn't been in almost two years when I went on my most recent trip, and I was just floored at uh, particularly the entrance because there was nothing magical about getting off the tram and walking through this maze of construction walls to get to the entrance. I just can't believe that this is what Disney ended up going with. They're like, this is fine. No one's going to mind. It's like, no, no. I'm expecting a quality experience here, and this is not getting my day off to a great start. So, other than that, just, like I said, the general state of Hollywood Studios, um, like that Kiss Goodnight thing that you sent earlier, Mario, is just the perfect representation of that. I I, I hate to say this because I loved Hollywood Studios, and maybe it was a lot of nostalgia and Osborne Light's love that was actually what really made me love studios but like ever since they started going on that spree where they were like let's close this and this and this and it was just things that didn't need to immediately be closed um i think disney got very heavy-handed with their closures in studios and unfortunately that's what makes it such a sad park to go in Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. kind of rolling from that one um one that I see a lot that bugs me is just Disney having a lack of concern about covering up construction. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I, you know, obviously you can point to Hollywood Studios and see what's going on there. The one that really, really shocked me when I saw pictures of it was them um, damming up the river to oh, do construction yeah. on, on the Liberty Bell. I was mm-hmm. like, are you, are you kidding me? Yeah. I mean, they have these bright orange, like, inflatable dams that they... are not orange, I think they were yellow, but it is brightly colored dams that they put out there. And then, like, oh, the whole half of the river is just bare dirt. And you see the track, which is, like, a huge taking away part of the illusion of the ride, you know? And mm-hmm. it's, it, I was very surprised to see them do that, especially because they tend to keep stuff covered up a lot better in Magic Kingdom. Do you yeah. remember when they were installing the new spires for Cinderella's castle and they were putting up the stuff that was essentially the projection towers for Happily Ever After and mm-hmm. how well they hid that? Yep. I was about to that say, I don't remember seeing that. years ago. Exactly. They were, what they were doing was they were putting up towers for, like I guess, the projection mapping and they were also putting up... Um, I, I think they had a lot to do with like the stage show and stuff. They were kind of doing a big refurbish on that. It was a couple years back. And what they did was they put up the towers... And then put castle scrim around it. Yeah. So it literally looks like it was part of the castle. 
It really did. I mean, seriously, until you got probably within like 20 or 30 feet of them, it looked like they do now. Hmm. And that's the thing. Like, it's so weird that this is the park that Disney is so concerned about preserving the magic with. And they're going to just drain the river and not put any like walls or support up around it. Yeah. Well, see, this seems like also, and I don't know, obviously, I'm, <laughs> I don't work at Disney, but if they're doing construction to the actual boat, I don't understand why they can't have the boat on the other half of the tracks behind where anyone can see it and dam off that section and do maintenance on it over there. I think they needed to do something to the tracks, too, if I remember correctly. And I but, can see that for sure, but, I mean, there has to be a less intrusive way to go about doing that. Yeah. Yeah. I totally agree. Yeah, I saw this in person, and it was not pretty. It was shocking. I think the other big example that has happened recently was Disney Quest. I was oh, absolutely... Yeah like astounded at how little they tried to cover up and that was like that was some like real gross looking demolition too like Mm -hmm. it it looked real decrepit and well it was like how long the demolition took it's like they got to the point where they left nothing but like the iron framing of the building left and it was sitting up for so long just like sitting out there rusting so Mm -hmm. yeah i kind of want to do a good job We're like rolling right through these with all of these tangents. I had to start marking them off. I'm sorry. (laughs) Um, But I want to throw out this too because I've ranted about this a couple times. I feel like there is such a disconnect between all of the different departments in Disney. Like between Imagineering, between operations, between every kind of function in the park. I don't feel like there's communication specifically in situations like this where it's like, oh yeah, we need to do a refurb, but let's just drain the river. Or even in Pandora where the entire part of like the immersion was the bioluminescence, uh, bioluminescence and the nighttime experience. And then for all of that to go down and then Disney to just drop some lights in there and be like, yeah, this works like stuff like that makes me feel like there's no communication on an internal level for some of these departments. Mm-hmm. And that's, that's mildly frustrating. Yeah, for sure. It's like the business side just sees this is how we can fix it. And they don't consult with the imagineering side of how can we fix it without it looking like crap. I also feel like we may give imagineering too much credit too, but <laughs> that's another thing. <laughs> I don't know. Maybe I'm a imagineering pixie duster, <laughs> <laughs> but um, I'm trying to figure out where we are now. I crossed out all of this stuff that we went through. Um, do we want to go back to Brian's? Yeah, we can go back to that one. Okay. Yeah. This is this is the one, and I almost feel bad saying it because Disney generally does a very, very good job at this, and I think it's just, it kind of highlights the areas that they miss. It's just, like, a lack of maintenance in some, like, small, specific places. And I don't know. It just, Disney always seems to do a good job of like keeping up with stuff and it makes it when there's something that's out of place you you really see it i think but it's like it's minor stuff usually but it's like low-hanging fruit most of the time that i feel like they could go back and take care of really easily but they just don't seem to care and it's like certain areas in the queue where like you can tell guests can like put their hands on it and they're not really supposed to and it like rubs the paint away Like, stuff like that. It's like, how hard is it to have somebody come in there and repaint that? Or even if they have to, like, you know, get a new mold of the the plastic piece that's going there. Like, how how much time will that take? How much money will that take? I I feel like it's worth it to keep up appearances because that's a huge part of what really gives the Disney parks their identity. Mm Mm-hmm. So, I kind of want to bounce off of that. This is, like, totally something we've, we've ranted about a couple times. And I'm going to throw out a couple more examples, but I hate when things in Disney break and they just take them out or like they, I'm going to throw it out there. They make the Yeti go into B mode. Um, Mm -hmm. (laughs) But one thing that I have to point out that I didn't know about until like a couple days ago was apparently there were mermaids on the Pirates of the Caribbean that were projected into the water that would swim alongside of your boat. 
What? Did you guys know about this? No. Okay, uh-uh. so apparently back in like 2012, um, at the very start of the Pirates of the Caribbean, when you go through that scene where there's like the uh, the little island and there's the skeleton on it with the boat and all that stuff, around there, there was a part of Pirates of the Caribbean where they would kind of like pump the water up so it would look like it, something was swimming there. And they would shoot a projection of like a mermaid or like it was kind of just a light. But the the technology, I guess, wasn't exactly how they wanted it to be. And most of the time it would either stop working, wouldn't work right, or it would come up as like the standard Windows error. <laughs> um, wow. So <laughs> things like that. Like, I, I love that Disney has the ideas to, to yeah, I know. I can hear you laughing about that. Because yeah, yeah. you can just picture it, can't you? Uh, Yar, you need to update your operating system. <laughs> oh, I have to find this. Um, because I saw it in a, I think it was a Yesterworld video. Um, about, like, the failed things that Disney hasn't done. Or even things like um, when they had the, the little... Oh my gosh, what's the Pixar lamp's name? Luxo. Yeah, uh-huh. when they had him as a, an animatronic in Pixar Place. Like, things like that where they can take things out that just kind of add a little bit extra. I, I think that's kind of a missed opportunity mm. that they don't fix it. Now, granted, what? I know why they don't fix the Yeti, but... Hey, so this bad. isn't a new thing, though. We talked about the Hatbox Ghost last week. Oh my gosh, yeah. Mm-hmm. It's very true. Um, I do want to just throw this out, not to sound like a Disney elitist or anything, but I think Disney, at least it can be said that they maintain their rides and their general park atmosphere 10,000 times better than Universal. Oh, that's Mm -hmm. for sure. Because as soon as we started talking about this, for some reason, my brain went to the Spider-Man 4D queue, and it is like... I don't know if you guys know what I'm talking about, but it's so. We're gonna talk about the donut. Yes, I swear. You oh know why I know that? Because you talked moldy. about it before. <laughs> that drives me nuts. Do you know how bad that takes me out of the experience? So, while I totally agree with this point, I just want to be thankful that this isn't a Universal Studios podcast because I would have a lot more negative things to say. But yeah, I will say that the one exception to the rule of keeping things maintained and fixed is the hippo with the wonky eye in small world because i feel like that hippo is a celebrity now and they should never oh, change yeah, that, it that's canon in the small right. world yes. universe like that's <laughs> exactly it's been like what 40 years like yeah that's just that's that's part of the ride <laughs> <laughs> oh also um flotsam and jetsam right from uh, in the Journey of the Little Mermaid ride, is it just me or are they always missing an eye? Oh, oh they're supposed to be. That's how you tell them apart. But why is it missing? Wait, are you talking about it missing or like one of them not lighting up? Yeah, it's not lighting up at all. Like it's black. Yeah, I think that's how it's supposed to be because I think in the movie doesn't one of theirs like on each side do that well, they're, maybe i'm crazy so? no well like one eye is i'm looking at a picture now and like one eye is like yellow and the other is like purplish oh but it's not black like it's not like they're missing an eye but last mm-hmm. time i read that i was like are they like it made me wonder i was like are they missing an eye in the movie i don't remember that because it was just total darkness so i guess like it would be one thing if it was like different colors like it actually is supposed to be but Every time I remember writing it, they're missing one or the other eye. That's okay, I'm looking up a picture, and it real it does look like in the movie they had one yellow eye and then one like kind of off color. I don't know if it's supposed to be white or what, but yeah, they they have one eye that's yellow and one eye that's not, and they're on opposite sides. Yeah, it's like an off white. Yeah. Yeah, I just I don't know. I think if they it, they could have added like a little dimmer light in there, but it just looks like a mistake. Beth, if we're going to talk about The Little Mermaid and we're going to talk about the animatronics, you're going to make me go on this rant that I've gone on several times before about how <laughs> awful 
the under the sea scene is. Oh my god. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, I thought okay. about that when I wrote it this past time, too, about how uh, we had talked about that. I hate the fact that they turned the lights on. Like, just, ugh, I'm not going to go on this rant. Go listen to our other episodes if you want to hear that. <laughs> um, but I do have to correct myself because I don't want to do this in post-production. I looked up that video, and apparently the the error message that was coming up on the Pirates of the Caribbean was just a rumor. They don't have any confirmed photos of it. And the photo was just very obviously like edited in in post production, but was not noticeable from my phone screen. So, <laughs> mm. <laughs> correction on that. I, I would like to see if that was actually a thing. But still, the effect was there, just not the error message. And it looks gotcha. like you actually have the next three in here. Oh gosh, uh, it's gonna be Beth's ranting hour now. <laughs> Okay, first of all, it drives me nuts. The planes that write, the little sky writers that write, Jesus loves you and God loves you and whatever, whatever. And I'm not saying this because I'm trying to offend anybody because I know that the two things you're never supposed to talk about are politics and religion. But Disney World is a place where people come from everywhere, all over the world, different backgrounds, different cultures. And I think it's real stupid that this one person is deciding like I'm going to just like put this out there for these people to see while they're first of all from many different cultures and second of all in a place that's not supposed to remind you of anything outside of that place so also right. is it really it kills the immersion yes exactly also isn't disney in a no fly zone Ex- yeah and i always wondered that like when i see this happening i'm like how are these people even getting away with this but i don't know um i'm gonna go ahead a little bit because i want to save the other one. Oh boy i can't wait for that one <laughs> um my one of my other big pet peeves is People using motor scooters that don't need them. You are ruining it for everyone else. Like, you're giving people that have handicaps a bad name because you're making everyone look like idiots with your... I don't know. I I don't even know how to explain this properly, but it just drives me nuts that there... First of all, there are so many motor scooters at Disney World, like, every single time I go, which was like a really stark difference from when I was at Disneyland. I was shocked at how few scooters I saw. Like, mm. I don't know what the, the cultural difference is there or what, but it was very refreshing to not be walking around scooters all day. But mm. yeah, we, we got enough strollers in the park. Oh like, my gosh. If you don't need the scooters, how do we miss please. This one? Yeah. Strollers. That's another thing. Like, these massive, like, three people, two, three people wide strollers. It's like, really? Do you really mm-hmm. need this, like, to be this big? That's what I like. One, come on, one of them kids has got to be old enough to walk by now. <laughs> hey, get them on up out of there and get a smaller <laughs> scooter. So, or at least fair. get, like, at least get the ones that are, like, back to back. You know, it's like a straight line and they're just mm-hmm. front and back and not side to side. It just drives me nuts, especially, and oh my God, y'all, I'm going off. I'm going off. The people that stop in the middle of walkways. Uh, what are yeah. you doing? I have that one for general crowd stuff, but oh, it, it fits sorry, in. No, no, it. it fits in here. Trust me, we can go on that. Like We'll go I, on this a couple times. I, I, I don't know. I think I'm, I'm very spatially aware but really only because it annoys me so bad Mm -hmm. when other people aren't that i like so consciously try to do it and it's not even like i'm that mad because like like my my wife does it a lot when we're in the park and i always have to kind of like scooter over like (laughs) we're in the way and just move over a little bit but it's like oh my gosh yeah the people that like have the scooter and they stop in the middle of a thin crowded walkway to like look at their phone or something i'm like how how do you not realize that you were walking in the middle of a pathway and you stopped and there are other people that are trying to use this same very narrow pathway as you right it's like i 
totally understand being so like excited to be there and seeing all the cool stuff and wanting to look around and even just like walking slowly or maybe stopping to look at something cool. Like I'm not going to get mad at you about that. What I'm going to get mad about is when you just dead stop right in the middle of the sidewalk to talk to somebody that you're with or dip into your stroller and dig around or like you said, look at your phone. It's like, how hard is it to take the extra three seconds to move to the side? Mm -hmm. Drives me nuts. So I have bad spatial awareness and we'll get to that when I get there. (laughs) I don't know. I think spatial awareness is one thing, but any, someone with the worst spatial awareness in the world can take the three seconds to step to the side of the sidewalk. Yeah. Oh, I have a rant. I just, this popped up and I'm going to forget it if I don't say it. But can we also talk about people that save spots for parades oh, and fireworks? Mm. Because and people who get back in line. So, no, no, no. I have to go on this rant because it's going to, it's going it. to, it's gonna, oh. Um, so we did the Halloween party two years ago. Um, I've talked about it a lot. I love the Halloween party. We went to go watch the stage show and boo to you and get a good spot in the hub because, or no, um, Hollow Wishes and the stage show. And we were going in the hub, like right next to Partner Statue. And we got there early enough that we could grab a seat, sit down and relax. Well, we go to sit down in the spot that presumably is open. And this older lady comes over, like older, older, not like couple years older than us like definitely grandma age comes running over and is like you're in my spot you're in my spot i'm saving these seats for my husband and we're like there's literally no seats here we're standing on the partner statue like leaning against it how Uh, like how can you claim this spot did you move (laughs) we did but that was because you're way nicer than i am we only did it because one, at this point in the night, we were both so tired. We we had crammed so much into this trip, and we were both just like, whatever, it's not worth it. We ended up actually, funny enough, um, I don't think I've ever talked about this. We went back towards where First Aid is in Magic Kingdom, back past Crystal Palace and all that, and grabbed a seat somewhere over that way, got really good seats for the, the fireworks. Um, somehow we managed to get closer for the stage show because I, I don't... I know I definitely would have gotten the pictures that I got from where we were, but we were able to do that. And then as we were leaving, I know booty, you was going to go off and we almost skipped it. And I hate to say that because it's my favorite parade now, but we were walking through the Emporium trying to just duck out. And we ended up all the way at the front of magic kingdom, right by the train station, um, right outside of the first entrance of the Emporium. And there was no one there. So somehow in like getting kicked out of our spot, it was like a godsend because everything else just worked out great for us. Well, that's probably karma at work because, and like I said, you're a lot nicer than I am because I probably wouldn't have moved. I, yeah. I, I keep it pretty mild for this podcast. I like to be friendly, family friendly and clean and as <laughs> polite as I can be, but... And I'm not saying that I'm, like, a terrible person or anything, but I have a much stronger personality in real life, and I'll uh, I'll tell you guys my little story here about people being rude. This isn't about saving seats, but it reminded me. Um, one time I was going to see Fantasmic, and this fully grown man who had to have been, like, at least 6'3", was sitting in front of me and had... Mickey ears on with those kinds that like strobe with all the different colors and flash. Oh, the glow with the glow with the show ones. I have those. <laughs> so, <laughs> no, I'm not mad that he was wearing them. Don't get me wrong. So he's sitting directly in front of me. He's got these on, and I'm not paying attention. I don't care. The shows like the lights go down. The show goes to start, and he's still got them on. And they're like literally, it's like in my line of vision. Like I can't really see. And so I like leaned over. And I was like, hey, like, would you mind taking your ears off for the show? I can't see. And he's like, yeah, I mind. I do mind. I was like, oh, you do, do you? So I, not being a nice person like you, Mario, took out my DSLR, which I happened to have at the time. And every time he turned his head, flashed and flashed and flashed. And guess what? No, 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 no. I can't listen anymore. Guess what he did? He took (laughs) Took his ears off, y'all. He did. I'm just saying. Oh, Flash photography, 
No, bruh. I had to combat it somehow, Mario. As soon as he took them off, I was done. That but hurts my soul. I could not be disrespected like that in my hometown. But like, you disrespected Phantasmic. It was the very beginning. Everyone, I, I guarantee you if the people sitting around me knew the story, they would have done the same thing. Or they would have not been mad at me about it. But, they so would anybody, have taken flash if, photography. If anybody out there is listening and this scenario was something that you were a part of, I apologize for the flashing, but now you know the story and hopefully you uh you get where I was coming from. Oh my gosh, that just like the the end of that conversation just went so far off the rails. <laughs> but the really funny thing was when I got home from my trip and I went to upload the photos, I had like twenty pictures at the back of this man's head. Oh, <laughs> uh, I've done stuff like that before. But so anyway we're not gonna talk about that. Not as nice as you, but it was very gratifying nonetheless. So, Mini, mini, mini tangent because we are so tight on time now. Yeah. Um, flash photography, another thing. Mm-hmm. I don't like that. Anyway. Yeah. <laughs> on rides and in shows that are dark. Um, I totally <laughs> and in shows agree. that are dark. I totally agree with you, except for my one circumstance. Um, we'll touch on this real quick. We don't have to rant about it unless you guys really want to. But I just want to say, if your dog is not a service dog, don't bring them to the park. Leave them at oh, home. I, okay. I could do a whole episode just like yelling at these people. Like I cannot stand this. Your chihuahua in your purse is not a service dog. This is going right back to the scooter things. Like you are making this so much worse for people that actually need those service dogs. Like, yeah. It, yeah, and like the ones that are like really like misbehaving, like you can tell they're not service dogs because they're not trained at all. It's mm-hmm. like and and you know, I get the the whole concept of not requiring that people prove that they're service dogs because you know, that would make it super inconvenient for the people that do need service dogs. They have to carry around paperwork or you know, prove themselves or whatever. It just seems disrespectful, but it's just like I wish there were some non-invasive way to like actually verify that service dogs are service dogs. Well, it's the thing. It's like you shouldn't have to worry about that. You know, you should just mm-hmm. say that the people that need them are going to use them. This is no different than like you pulling into a handicap spot because you're like, oh, it was open, and no one else was using it. Like mm-hmm. everybody would call you names for doing that. Like, it's the same type of thing if you're bringing in a dog and you don't really need a service dog. Yeah, and it's just like I don't understand the point. I mean, maybe I guess the novelty of having your dog at the park, but that just seems like a huge inconvenience. And like, like I don't need. What do they do? Do they get on the rides? How does that even work? I don't work? get it either. And like, look, I, I'm a dog owner. I love my dog, and I will take her to like certain stores and places that are pet friendly with me, and she rides in the car with me a lot. But like, I feel like these people that cannot be separated from their dogs have like issues in and of themselves like if they're not Uh service dogs and you feel the need that like you cannot be separated from this dog like or something's going to happen like that's another issue in in itself and also like i just can't imagine that this is a fun experience for the dog like a service dog this is what it's trained for it's trained to be around large crowds and like have the endurance to go throughout the day like activities with its owner but like a regular like house pet dog is not gonna have fun walking around in the heat for eight hours exactly i so i can't remember if we talked about this with uh champ when we did that episode but i know that disney makes you register for certain disabilities like not even register but like submit paperwork for different things like um I guess their like their disability passes and stuff like that. Service dogs, I feel like that's another thing that should definitely be like kind of registered through Disney. Like there's paperwork for it. You should be able to submit it, but I don't know. And at the same time, I'm not gonna diss anyone that has a service animal, but I feel like I recently found out, like a couple months ago, that you can have a miniature horse as a service animal. So when are we gonna start seeing them in the parks? That's that's what I'm concerned about. I like, heard it a lady has dogs? already done that. I haven't seen it, but I wouldn't be surprised. I Maybe uh, it was a rumor, but I heard that someone has already done that. That seems like, I mean, I don't know. I feel like that's not helping you. Like That's more of a detriment, I feel like, like having to keep up with a horse. 
The <laughs> only <laughs> horse, Brian. The only like possible thing I could see a like horse being like better than a dog for a service animal is the fact that it could actually like carry you somewhere. But oh god, that wait! Are, I, I always thought these were like the even smaller ones. No, they're the smaller ride. ones. I'm okay. gonna send you a picture I just found on Reddit by googling. Um, so is it like a, a dog-sized horse? It's like a dog-sized horse. Oh, okay. Well, then I take that back. Um, but yeah, it's it, it's a like pony. Hmm. Mm. Anyway, long story short. If you don't have a disability and you don't need the special, like, <laughs> assistance, just don't do it. You're being a jerk. I also yeah. feel like with all the stuff we've just sent back and forth to each other, Kristen's probably so confused. <laughs> <laughs> She's probably like, where did this episode go? Uh, so is it my turn to rant? Because I have, like, the next six things. Go for it. Um, I want to keep this last one towards the very end because I feel like that can end on a positive note. So I'm going to drop that down there. Um, but my first one is iPad photography. And <laughs> this is like the only, not, well, no, this isn't the only place, but like you see this a lot in like touristy locations where people bring their giant iPads out and they decide that it's going to be the best thing in the world to just take pictures with it when, mind you, you probably have a better camera on your phone than your iPad does. Um, or even worse, they take videos. Oh, I, the only, like, the funniest thing that I ever actually saw was somebody took a picture of someone taking a picture of the castle on an iPad, and they set it, their camera enough so that it blurred out everything but the iPad, and the, the actual picture of the castle was in focus on the iPad, and I was like, they probably didn't mean for it to be as much of, like, a, a talking piece about how people use iPads as cameras all the time, but to me, that's what I took it as. <laughs> I don't get this. Like, if you, unless you're using it for like a disability or accessibility type device, why are you bringing an iPad <laughs> into the park? Why do you want to keep up with that all day? God, Here's right. my thing. So, funny, funny little thing. Um, I'm planning on taking my iPad with me this next trip. Not for anything in the park. I'm leaving it in the hotel room, but specifically so I can transfer my photos from my camera to my iPad to my Adobe Lightroom, and that's where it's going to end. Oh, that's... I mean, that's fine. I've, I've brought a computer with me, like... Well, no, that's what I mean. Like, Disney, even in the, room. in the parks, though, yeah. Yeah, that's what, that's yeah. what I mean. Like, I, I wholeheartedly agree with you on that. Like, that's a thing that you bring with you for the plane, for your room, for whatever... But don't bring it to the parks because mm -hmm. something like that, one, is more susceptible to breaking and two is going to be right in my face when I try to look at a castle. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Also, to kind of segue off of that, people that FaceTime oh. the shows with people that aren't there, just go mm. on YouTube and watch a 4K video of the yeah. show. But I like the video to be really blurry and the audio <laughs> really compressed when I watch it. I also like to know that everyone around me is annoyed by me. <laughs> Just adds to the I, experience. Oh my gosh. So, uh, I gotta go on this tirade. I'm sorry. I... My mom has gone on this, this spree lately of telling everyone that I do a Disney podcast. So if anyone <laughs> in my family is listening, I'm so sorry. But... <laughs> My biggest, biggest thing, and this is only because it's personal, I hate when people try to spend time for people that aren't on that vacation. Mm -hmm. So, throwing it back, I know that this cousin doesn't listen, but the last trip that we took with my whole family was supposed to be for the whole family, and for some reason, my little cousin decided she wanted to meet characters and make them take a, or like a video of them saying hi to her best friend who was at home, which was fine if it would have taken five seconds to meet every character that she was meeting. Instead, I had to wait in that long Princess Fairy Tale Hall line for Anna and Elsa during not, or a very merry Christmas party uh. when they meet outside of that. Uh -huh. Oh, <laughs> no, the plus the plus side is is my cousin, my other younger cousin and I stood in the line for Rapunzel and Flynn and Prince Charming and Cinderella and that was pretty cool because they don't meet all the time but we waited forever for the other cousin in the gift shop. Dang. So tangent tangent over. I I apologize <laughs> if anyone in my family is listening and is offended or is laughing hysterically at this because 
Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I I agree with that as well. Like, I don't see any problem in you, like, for example, when I go to Epcot and I'm in the Germany Pavilion, I will usually, I'll usually give my mom a call or Skype my mom for a few minutes because my family is German and we'll have like a cute little, hey, I'm in Germany and we're talking, like we're speaking German kind of conversation. But it lasts like a minute and a half and then it's over. But the cool. people that, like I said, the ones that Skype the, or I guess FaceTime the shows or like on the rides or they spend the entire day on FaceTime it's like you're not getting the experience that you're supposed to be getting right now. Right. And see, like, if it's if it's minuscule stuff, that's fine. Like, the last time my mom was down there, she was sending me pictures and was like, where in Disney am I? And it was always, like, obscure things because she knew that I would either find them or have the means to figure it out. Thanks, guys, for that uh, Guardians of the Galaxy hint. <laughs> um, so, like, that's fine. Like, if you're not spending your entire trip about that thing that's that's where i start to get you know whatever yeah um but my next one and this is the actually my biggest pet peeve and it's going to tie into the one i'm going to talk about after that too forcing magical moments or treating cast members poorly um both of those things i've seen happen plenty of times a lot of times it's the people that either go online and read like the different forums or Reddit and they see these things that happen to other people and they think that just because it happened to someone else, it has to happen to them. Life um, hacks. Yeah. And it's, it's stuff like that that gets me really angry because I think magical moments are super special. Mm -hmm. Um, for example, like the first time we went was for an anniversary trip. The second time was just because we didn't get the buttons then this next time's for my girlfriend's birthday. So between those three trips that we took, um, Two of those specifically, I made her wear buttons for. And it wasn't because I wanted anything special to happen. It wasn't because I wanted a magical moment to happen. I didn't want anything to happen. I just think it's a fun little thing. Now, I remember reading a thread on Reddit a while ago about someone that wore their button in the park and was very upset that all they got was people saying happy birthday to them. And it's like, that's so annoying to me mm -hmm. because it's like you're, you're expecting it. How is it special if you're expecting it? Right, exactly. And it's like... I don't know. And it's just like a sense of entitlement that drives me nuts. Yeah. Just let the magic happen is the moral of this story. Yes, exactly. Because then it's actually magic. It's not expectation. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Also kind of tying into that cast members, they one know what they're supposed to be doing. They know the safety procedures. They know all of that stuff. Um, so please respect them when they tell you not to stand in certain places or, you know, walk somewhere or do something like they're not doing it to ruin your vacation. Just listen to them and it'll make your life so much better. Mm hmm. Yeah. And everyone else's. <clears throat> yeah, yeah. And everyone else's. It's like there, there's so much truth to the old saying, catch more flies with honey than vinegar. It's like yeah. Yeah. if you're nice to cast members, they're going to be a lot more willing to work with you and, you know, make your trip better and fix whatever bad thing happened than if you go up and start yelling at them. Side note, I want to take a moment to just appreciate cast members as a whole. Because, yes. like, I, you know, I've worked service jobs. I've worked, you know, positions where you deal with people all day my entire life. And there are days where I just can't. I just don't want to do it anymore. And these people do it so much, so well. And they have to put on that Disney disguise. And it's just fantastic. Some of them, I know they love their jobs. Um, I want to take a moment to tell you guys about this awesome cast member experience that I had when I was calling, but I don't know if we have time to. Um, but just shout out to those awesome cast members. Mm hmm Totally. I, there's, mm -hmm. and you know, even, even going a little bit further, it's like, shout out to those cast members that not only are they doing, like, being super competent and, like, doing a great job, but they're, like, going out of their way to be even more of a good experience like there are yeah. so many cast members that i that have become kind of like inside jokes with me and my friends because they did something super funny like i think i don't know if i've told you guys this but there was a guy that drove a tram at hollywood studios one time and he sang this little song while it was or he did he wasn't the driver he was the guy on the back um and he's like ain't no party like a disney party <laughs> and everybody say hey like he just was getting like everyone in the tram on, like 
uh, like into it and it just made everything like so much more pleasant and it was just such a nice little perk so shout out even more so to those type of cast members who take it a step further yeah like and the people that do stuff like that are the ones that you know really do make disney famous or whatever mm-hmm. um like the uh oh my gosh what was that lady's name that was like really popular on main street and had like was always at the the parades and stuff was always dancing i can't remember her name and that's gonna kill me i think was it barbara she was in all the like the disney videos and stuff on the magical express i also feel like that was super like targeted at me and neither of you are gonna know that <laughs> <laughs> i don't know i'll look it up and i'll feel bad someone will tell me something about it <laughs> um but yeah and then my last one that i have that i'm gonna quickly rant about because this it says a lot about itself is when parents put children on their shoulders and decide to, you know, watch parades or block other people's views. Same thing that we said about iPads. It's just annoying. Please stop. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yep. So the next two are Brian's and then I, I want to use my last one to be positive at the end. Well, we already kind of touched on special awareness. So I guess we can cross that one off. Um, I'm surprised it took us so long to get to this one. <laughs> the obnoxious tour groups. Uh, so, now, like, you go yeah. ahead. No, I was I was going to be positive about it for a little bit and say that... Is there I, something positive about it? I understand <laughs> why they're here. I mean, obviously, Disney is for everyone, but I think it's not the tour groups themselves. It's the acts of the tour groups. Oh, for oh, sure. Well, yeah. Yeah, I mean, like, I just wanted to clear that up first before we start talking. Now, the about only this. thing, and I don't like, it's almost kind of a more playful thing. But like, if I see them walking like next to me in a ride that like I'm trying to get to, I'm always all right. Let's go, let's go. Got to get to the <laughs> ride before they do, just because oh. it'll make the line longer. But no, yeah, the the singing and chanting thing. Mm, yeah, I, and I, don't, clapping. I don't. Yes, I don't want to offend anyone, but it's the cheerleader groups that drive me absolutely insane when they start this because they'll like, I don't know if it's like a gang thing when they pass the other <laughs> cheerleading group and they start like both doing cheerleading it. gang. Yeah, but I just uh, it drives me up the wall. Like you are ruining the ambiance of the park and like getting it i don't know it's like they want the attention so bad that they want everybody's attention on them instead of letting people enjoy the park that they're on vacation to enjoy Mm -hmm. it's just like and i guess part of that is just being a young like stupid kid but i don't know you can also be a kid and not be super obnoxious well and the chaperones are there and i know they don't want to like destroy the kids good time but it's like i feel like they should step in and be like hey guys y'all are being really loud and kind of ruining this for everyone else yeah um i want to throw something in that's not really related to this but it just popped up because of what we were talking about um i can't stand the people that like were, like talk along with the narration oh, of attractions. <laughs> well, it's fine if you do like if you don't. But the one I'm talking about the ones that like try to talk over it. Like oh. I want everyone to know that I know all the words to the haunted mansion spiel. Everyone, me, it's me over here. Sorry, it's like again. <laughs> do you do it really loudly? No, I don't. I, I do you do it like to yourself, or do you do it like loud, loud? I do it to myself, and I do it to piss my girlfriend off. That's fine. <laughs> I'm talking about the people who are like. Judging by Brian's laugh, I feel like you do that too. Way. No, actually, it's my wife that does it to me. Oh, okay. Um, she and she does it in the stretching room. She she does. There's always my way, and then she always. <laughs> That's what I just said. And she always does this because I used to just, like, instinctively go to grab the bar. She always, like, really loudly, even before the, like, ghost host says it, she's like, I'll lower the bar for you. (laughs) (laughs) I do it in Dinosaur. That's the one that I do it for in the pre-show because it's always super loud in there and I know no one else can hear me. So I'll, like, I'll quote it to myself or if, like, she's standing in proximity that I know I can just, like, lean over and do it, I can do it then. But only if we've ridden, like, wrote it once. 
And even then, she'll still, like, look at me, and you can just feel the tension coming off of her face. See, and I have no problem with that, and I have no problem with people, like, using a normal tone of voice. But the ones that, like, speak loudly, like, trying to talk over the narration, that's you know what really one, grinds my gears. You know which one I hear that a lot in, surprisingly? Tower of um, Terror? Yes. Yes. That's one I did not think that I would hear that in, but it's always at the very end. Mm. Mm-hmm. That or when people scream with the the haunted mansion. That ugh. oh my god, I hate that. Sorry, I hate it. Don't do it. <laughs> uh, so do we have any like last minute ones we want to throw in? Because I have this last one, and I can I, I can spin this in a positive way. I'm intrigued to see how you do that. Okay, so <laughs> I I'm not going to spin this in a positive way, as in like people that do this can be positive, but I wanted to end this on this one because. I feel like all of these things said, you can kind of find ways to be annoyed with them. You can find ways to be like upset about them on your Disney vacation. Um, But just remember one, this is a once in a lifetime for a lot of people. This could be a once in a lifetime for you. This could be a destination that you really love. And this could be a place that, you know, you could really make a lot of memories with. So while you're in Disney, please don't bring everyone in your party down, make the most of your vacation and don't try to ruin other people's vacations. That was my positive spin on that. That's really well said. I think that covers a lot of these issues Mm -hmm. we talked about before. And even then, like stuff that we get annoyed with, like, I mean, obviously Beth said that she had her moment, but like, you know, there's stuff in here. Like, I'm not going to walk up to someone with an iPad and be like, please leave that in your hotel room. Like, I'm not going to do that. Like, you know, whatever. Just laugh it off with your friends. Be like, oh, haha, they brought an iPad in the park. How silly. Like, it's, you know, all of that said, you're there to have fun. So are they. So is everyone else. Obviously, there are people in there that are trying to game the system, that are trying to do things they shouldn't do, or are doing things that could potentially ruin your vacation, but just don't let it. You know, you spent the money to be there, as did they. (laughs) Yeah. And I just want to throw out there, again, that guy was very rude. (laughs) (laughs) And Fantasmic is sacred, so. I had, um, this one time, I have to throw this out here, because I, like, I... You know, I made this mistake, and I think this story is worth telling, but obviously, well, not obviously, surprisingly, it wasn't in Disney, so I guess it, it works. Um, we went to Universal with my parents like two years ago, and we were in line for Minions, and we're waiting to get in, and we got to the part in the queue. I don't know how familiar with that queue you guys are, because I know you don't really go to Universal a lot, but there's a part of that queue that comes to like a corner where you can kind of see outside of the queue like the whole most of it's outside but there's like a corner where it's like on the street like you pass by the street um and as we got up to that corner the people in front of us let their entire family cut in line in front of us and i got very upset i don't (laughs) yeah that's how i felt i honestly like it's funny because if you look at myself and my girlfriend she's the more of the person that gets upset about stuff like that so when it kind of alarmed me and I was like, no, you don't do that. And I like, I legitimately said something to them. Like I was very angry about it. And I told them like, Hey, like that wasn't right. You just cut in front of us. We've been waiting in line just as long as you. And you made our wait time longer by adding three more people. And this all happened in front of a, whatever you call universal employees. Um, but this all happened in front of them and like the lady started like yelling back and like I didn't scream at her. I didn't get loud with her. I didn't say anything mean, but I was like very upset, very agitated. And I told the cast member, I was like, that lady was super rude and she just cut in front of us and then told us, well, tough BS, like you got to deal with it. And I don't think that's fair. Not expecting them to like, you know, move us up or anything. I mean, she, she purposely cut, us off in the line and said you go ahead let them move up into their seats and then let us go into a different section of the line but still like it it made me so angry that like the rest of the day i was just heated and it's Uh something so little that happened in five minutes that like ruined my entire day and it didn't need to yeah so like in retrospect it was dumb i shouldn't have said anything i shouldn't have done anything just should have been like well whatever that was stupid they you know obviously they made my wait time longer but i'm gonna just deal with it because you know, I'm, I want to have fun. Yeah. And, you know, you really do. You just sometimes stuff happens. You can't control it. Sometimes you got to let it go. Yeah. Well, 
that's all I've got to be angry about with Disney and Disney <laughs> park goers. Oh, yeah, man, this is therapeutic. I mean, this is probably our longest episode too. So, but I guess <laughs> you know it's it's okay because this is the only one of like this that we've done. So we had to get I, it all out in one go, right? Yeah. yeah, I was thinking about this today though. We have had a couple moments where we've kind of gone off on it and been like very angry at disney before <laughs> um specifically at the one point when kirsten was like i think this is my tipping point and i'm never gonna go back to disney again <laughs> which was funny enough i'm gonna say this and i don't mean anything bad that was the last time kirsten was a regular on this show <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh oh. that's funny well, well, obviously, you know, we that's, all... that has nothing to do with it. I want to throw that out there before people start saying, like, Kirsten's not on the show anymore. No, mm-hmm. Kirsten is still very much here. She's just got a baby, and she has to deal with that. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Sometimes you just say things you don't mean in the heat of the argument. Mm-hmm. Oh. I think that was, we were talking about Disney price hikes. Mm-hmm. <laughs> we yeah. got very heated on that one. Oh. All right, so anything you guys want to talk about before we tie this show up this week? All right, well, thanks for sticking Mm. with us, you guys. We'll be back to our positive selves Mm. next week. (laughs) I'm interested to see the listen-through statistics on this one. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, if you're listening all the way through, tell us your annoying Disney things, Mm -hmm. things that have pissed you off in Disney World. We'll be happy to talk about them. They're going to be like podcasts that spend two hours ranting about the stuff they don't like. (laughs) Oh. oh man that's funny and that's gonna do it for us this week thanks for joining us again on another episode of the station 71 podcast if you like what you heard be sure to subscribe to us wherever you get your podcast from and leave us a review while you're at it as well if you want to get in touch with us you can find us online at facebook.com backslash station 71 pod twitter at station 71 pod instagram at station 71 podcast and you can send us a listener email to station 71 podcast at gmail.com you can now call us on our brand new google voice line at 561 561- 899-6441 and we'll be happy to play your message back on the show. We hope you enjoyed your ride and we'll see you real soon. Please stand clear of the doors. Por favor, manténganse alejado de las puertas.